Here's a bottom line category of herbs that everybody needs, and it's herbs to make you poop. That's a medical term. Uh, herbs to move the bowels. The bottom line is, is life stops when your elimination channels stop. And everybody in their house, at some time or another, gets constipated. Okay. And when the elimination channels stop, the liver backs up, the poisons build up, and that can be the beginning of the fall into a disease, even a terminal I disease. I notice when you get under stress, oh. you get constipated. Or, oh. No, you go one way or the other, some people. Oh, yeah, yeah I'll tend to get diarrhea. Oh, yeah. Sure, get sure, so you need herbs for both sides yeah. of that. These are the first categories we need herbs to turn the bowel on. 97, 98% of America has stuck bowels, constipation. I found with my patients, I had to turn it up. One of these used to be considered only a laxative for horses, a, 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 an animal that weighs 10 times. Mean one, of these, one of the herbs? One of the herbs, and, it, and, and it's called aloes, but it's not the aloe vera. It's a different type of aloes called aloe spicata or aloe ferox. The common names are sometimes cape aloes and curacao aloes, but the dried gel contains a chemical called amodin, and it's a purgative, a laxative. Mm -hmm. uh, you can take amodin. They use it in naturopathic school, and they'll remove the intestines out of a dead body. Uh -huh. They'll put the amodin on it, and the intestines contract. There's a, there's a chemical mm. in this aloes that responds and reacts to the tissue of the bowel and makes it move. So whatever you Amazing. eat, drink. See, I had patients come to me, and I needed to get their bowels working tomorrow. Tomorrow. Not in a month or two months. Not wait till they had more fiber in their diet and they were more relaxed. Because tomorrow you morning, had the terminals. That's right. They were scheduled for colostomies. They were scheduled for major surgeries and because their bowel wasn't working. So I had to get their bowel working. And I'm sorry, but the licorice and the carob and the slippery elm, they're all great herbs, but that doesn't do it. The formulas in the health food store, they don't do it. I had to go to horse laxatives to open up my patients' bowels. I mean, I've told you about some of the stories of these people's bowels. I've had people that had 40, 50 pounds of fecal matter stuck inside them. And I'm sorry, a little meditation and some essential oils doesn't move that out. You need herbal roto-rooters. Well, what's the difference between just going to a drugstore and getting, aren't they strong laxatives that uh, you get in drugstores? Don't they do the job? No, they never work for my patients either. Many of them are very lightweight. America doesn't believe in strong laxatives. America believes in the highest rate of colon rectal cancer in the world. That's what America <laughs> believes in. And all around the world, they use these herbs. And the three herbs in this category that all contain a modin are the aloes, the cape and the curacao aloes, Senna pods and leaves and Cascara sagrada. And they have that emodin. That they all have that emodin. They're the strongest three. The aloes the senna leaves and pods, and the cascara sagrada bark. Didn't you tell me you had a little baby once that they said but oh. the colon, there was no oh. nerves? Oh, or, absolutely. Tell me about that. I've had so many people that have come to me who have had, uh, the doctor said they wouldn't even have bowel movements. That particular baby had a disease called Hirschsprung's disease, which they say means there's no er nerve impulse to the large intestine at all, and they were going to remove its intestine before it was a year old. And they said it would never have a bowel movement. You've heard all my other stories about the bowels, and that baby had a bowel movement the next day on its own. Miracle. Forget dead nerves. There's Gosh. no such thing as dead nerves when you have these herbs right here. I can get any nerve working again. This is a Dr. Schultz guarantee. I can get anybody to poop. I can get <laughs> anybody to have a bowel movement. And these are the blessing herbs to do it. Now, I just threw something else in here okay. because this is something that all our ancestors used. It's very high tech. Like it's charcoal. called burnt. Yeah, you got sure. it. It's charcoal. It's burnt wood. Um, it's just burnt. This is burnt willow tree. Charcoal. And this is healthy for well, you? Well, let me ask you something. What's in, you have water filters at home. If yeah. What's inside every water filter? Well, all the same. Charcoal. charcoal. They're all the same. Charcoal, charcoal is the greatest absorber known of insecticides, pesticides, chlorine, PCBs, organic poisons, inorganic Amazing. poisons, virus, bacteria. You can take a charcoal filter and use it to filter urine and fecal matter, and you can drink what comes out the other side. They oh, use yeah. it in the space shuttle to recirculate so they can live on this material. Let mm. me tell you, 
This is the greatest absorber of poisons known. There's none better. And all our ancestors knew that when you were poisoned, when you were sick in the guts and intestines, that oh, a yeah. dosage of charcoal, a teaspoon put in a, in a glass of water and stir it up, can absorb the poisons before they get to you, before but they hurt you. how do they get you. out? Does this come out of your body? It absorbs right into this, and then this comes out with your bowel movement. So this, you okay. got to have it. Oh, this is right? a, a first aid emergency. Anytime you, if someone even poisons themselves or takes the wrong pills by accident, charcoal mm. will absorb everything. You could use the low Lobelia to vomit first, a high dose of lobelia, a tablespoon every 10 minutes until you vomit, which won't take you very long if you have the right lobelia or okay. a strong lobelia tea. Mm. And then once you vomit, get the charcoal in. And I don't care what you put in your body, it won't hurt That's you. That's a great traveling oh, yeah, I was just traveling. saying, you travel a lot. You travel a lot more than I have. Oh. Have you ever had, well, you got a bad meal on oh, that last trip. Oh, man, I'll tell you, I've been poisoned in India. I've had uh, Montezuma's Revenge in Mexico, you know, the Mexican hat dance where you're running like this to the bathroom. Um, believe me, I've had a dysentery, a mebic dysentery, where I was having 30, 40 bowel movements a day. Well, that's, di had, that's total I've, diarrhea. Oh, I've had poisoning. Um, uh, charcoal and, and you, and what happened charcoal when you absorbs that? the poisons, and then we use herbs like uh, slippery elm, and we use herbs like how quick do you feel clay to solidify the bowel. How quick do you feel better? Because when you got food poisoning, you get that pain. No, you, you get gotta, gas you don't blowing even want you up. To drink water. You know, the first thing I did with my patients when they felt that, uh oh. I'm in uh -oh. trouble. Yeah. Okay, the first thing to do is I would have them make a big quart of warm water, put a juice of a lemon or a lime in it, drink it down, go to the toilet, put their finger down their throat, and get rid of anything Ooh. that's warm in their stomach. Does it, huh? If there's poison in there, Just get in. rid of it. Get rid of all the poison first. Then you can start dosages of charcoal. Mm. You can use your bowel cleansing herbs, the ones to push things through. Use the other herbs to absorb and draw. Now, this is crazy. Have you ever used this up the other end? Oh, absolutely. And if you're really poisoned, use it in every orifice of your body. The, the two categories of pooping herbs are, are the ones <laughs> to make you go and the other ones to absorb poisons. I, I have two formulas I made in my clinic. You know them, intestinal formula one, one and intestinal formula number two. I use those more than any other formulas to heal my patients. But you've got to remember your bowel herbs. And the same way that you can't live if you don't poop, Right. Life loses all meaning if you stop peeing. I had a man who had a complete prostate closure, and he said there were a lot of things important in his life, but when he couldn't pee anymore, he said he never remembered any of them. All he thought about was, how can I pee? Well, that, you know that's never happened. You would have called you in the yeah. middle of the night. <laughs> But that happens? Yes. You mean they have urine to pass? Sometimes. Well, can't you die if, if you, can, if, if you oh, cannot urinate? Oh, very quickly. I mean, if you I've can't I've had four-year-olds that live. were dying that couldn't urinate. I've eight years something old. something closes off down uh, the there? The prostate pinches off the urethra when you have prostate hypergrowth. These will still and help you And you're hurting and you're cramped cramp and you can't go? Oh, how about urinary infections of the kidneys and bladder? I'm telling you, I never, ever had a patient that had an infection in the kidneys and bladder that when I used the urinary tract herbs, it didn't take it away immediately. I had a man with leukemia that was so close to death, and he said, look, you can't heal my leukemia, but please get rid of my kidney and bladder infection. And the next day, he called me up and he said, you did what no doctor or no medicine can do. My kidney bladder infection is gone. Mm. These, these aren't just sometimes or maybes. These are 100%. What is this? These are what juniper berries. Dr. Christopher used to carry these just like berries. this in his bag, in his house call bag. They not only... Is this the, what it looks like? Yeah, no, this, these are them here. Oh, these that's are, something different. Yeah, these are juniper nice berries. Taste. What's that? It's nice. Yeah. Uh, they have, you can try one. They have a very um, pleasant, tiny honey. flavor of volatile oil. Yeah. These are juniper berries. And juniper berries have a couple different chemicals in them. One that makes you urinate. It's mm -hmm. called a diuretic chemical. Mm -hmm. And the other one to disinfect your urinary tract. Isn't this nice so too? it I not like only it. will yeah. make you pee more, but it'll stop all kidney and bladder infections. And these are the juniper berries. So many on the market are not blue. Uh, you need to get nice juniper berries. But these grow uh, in most mountainous areas of the United States. You're, you're going to tell us how to make this into something Absolutely. that you can take. Absolutely. Okay. Richard, this I is heard, exciting. Oh, 
Tea? Sure. We do tea with you this? can make oh, tea, you can tea. make tincture, you can do anything with these herbs. Oh, you tea can or tincture, we can do tea, that. Tea, tincture, powder, you, you could put juniper berries. Um, these have an interesting aroma to them. They use them in Europe and they put them on uh, strong meats that they eat to take away the taste. Um, but we use them for our kidney bladder infections. Richard, I heard, you know, these are know-it-all herb books. They said this is toxic. They said don't use juniper berries. <laughs> toxic? Yeah. yeah, that's what they say. Really? How much did the drug companies pay them to say that? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you've heard that. Is it true? It's not yeah. true, is it? Never. Juniper berries are so safe and easy. There's, there's. I've, I've never seen an herb. You know, Sam. I've gone out in the wild and I've tasted everything. I've tasted deadly poisonous mushrooms. I've eaten nightshade belladonna. I've tasted uh, poison hemlock. All the cases of poisoning. Why'd you do that? Uh, because I wanted to see what these herbs tasted like. You, I mean, you didn't want to oh, die. Oh, I had people told me that oleander would kill me and I've eaten leaves of it. I have no, I can say you that I know that these herbs have very strong taste. Oleander that people say could stop your heart is so bitter. You wouldn't want to eat it as, as, a, as a food. Um, what I'm telling you is that when you hear about people poisoning themselves in nature using herbs, it's always because they were stupid about it. Um, the mushroom poisoning I read about recently, they chopped up mushrooms they didn't know and then put them into a beef stew. They didn't taste them to see what they tasted like. Mm. They put them in a beef stew. How would you taste anything after you put it in beef stew? Mm. Another person with oleander that poisoned themselves put a hot dog on the end of it and the juice from the oleander stalk ran into the hot dog and poisoned them. How could you taste anything inside a hot dog? Uh, another person that poisoned themselves used poke berries and put four cups of sugar with it and made a berry pie. I mean, this is not nature going out there with sugar and hot dogs and beef stew. <laughs> <laughs> you got to walk through nature and taste it. You just tasted that. It's a You're, lovely taste. You know, I, nice. I don't want to get esoteric here, but I don't believe that you two are that stupid that you couldn't eat something and your internal message will tell you if it's right for you or not. My job as a doctor was to empower my patients. Medical doctors say, look, you're stupid. I'm a brilliant person with a degree. Don't ask questions or I'll have to give you an antidepressant drug. Okay, my job was to say, hey, look, you really know. You can taste these things. You can smell them. You can feel what's going on in your body. We're not as ignorant as medicine would like us to believe. And so I had to empower my patients. We've been brainwashed. Oh, brainwashed to not ask questions and right. we're stupid. Right. Okay. These are uva ursi leaves. You can look up in the chemistry books, in the Merck book on chemistry, and it says that these leaves uva are a ursi. diuretic and a urinary disinfectant, uva ursi. So the chemistry books... Why do you books, use this if they do the similar things? They do the similar thing. But, but, These are just optional. Oh, and you need, if you, sometimes you need an option. Oh, and if you build a formula, why not take a little juniper? Oh, because maybe they're not identical, a, that's right? That's right, and mix it with a little uva ursi. And you know what a third one would be right here? What? Corn silk. You buy fresh corn, you pull off that string, that golden yellow to brown straw that's mm. under the husk of the corn, put it on a little cloth in your kitchen and let it dry. Corn silk will make you urinate, it'll disinfect juniper berries. Oh, uh, or you could go to the grocery store and get a little parsley. Oh, that's right. Because sometimes when my kidneys one. are all oh. ir irritated, you know, it just you, calms you know, me down. You know, Sam, uh, the next herb that we need to have, that we need to know about, is for the heart. Now, we already talked about the chili peppers saving you from a heart attack, a stroke, circulation emergencies, increasing your circulation. Okay. But there's another herb that the chemicals in this plant, the nutrition in this plant, actually will bind to the heart cells and make a protective coating around them. What that does is if you have a lack of blood flow to your heart, like angina or what happens before a heart attack, it allows your heart cells to actually survive on less blood and less oxygen. And if you do have a heart attack, if, if it happens, your heart cells won't be damaged because of this protection. So it's kind of like plexiglass on oh, the heart. Oh, it's unbelievable. This herb, hawthorn berries, mm. binds to the heart cells, is nutrition for the heart cells, will let your heart cells live and breathe with less blood and oxygen. And if you have a coronary, uh, if you have a heart attack, you won't have the damage. This is the protection for the heart. And since heart disease kills more Americans than all other diseases put together, 
We have to have the hawthorn berries. Anybody that has heart disease in their family, anybody that's had any heart problems, whether it be a regular heartbeat or angina pectoris, anybody with a high cholesterol or level. Even women oh, over past menopause. Absolutely. Protect more your heart. Risk. Is this the insurance policy? Oh, it's an insurance policy. You can have it every day. It tastes good. You can make jam out of it if you want. I've heard of tea. Hawthorn berries yeah. are great berries. You can make a tea. You Not can that make hard a to get, is it? No. Hawthorn is an ornamental plant. Uh, many people grow it in their yard. I've had questions grows, like what kind. They're worried uh, if they miss the kind, the no, species. No, it's not important. There are many species of it, and people use all of them. Hawthorn okay. berries have pectin and flavonoids. Protects the heart cells. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. These, this is the heart protector. The <laughs> heart you, protector. A lot of pectin in here. You'll find it, 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 it can get very slimy, uh, and it, that's why it makes good jam. It's like a pit. Yeah, it? there's a little mm -hmm. stone in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's hawthorn berries. The heart protector. Everybody should have hawthorn berries in their tasting. house. Use it. Mm. And the same way you have, this is, this is protection against the number one killer in America. The number two killer in America is cancer. Okay. And the protection yeah. is with the liver. You need the liver protectors. The number one herb to protect the liver is milk thistle. And milk thistle binds to the liver cells. Same situation, And right? protects them. It's the plexiglass. So we it's cover one organ, glass. then we cover the That's other right. organ. We got to save the heart for the heart disease and the liver for cancer to protect that liver so it can detoxify the body. And milk thistle does the same thing. So milk thistle is the number one liver herb. And then we have to think about the bitters, the bitters that flush the liver out. Golden seal, barberry, chaparral. Do you know that if I was to come from my clinic in California to your home in Virginia and drive that whole way and take a sample of every plant that grew between our two houses, mm -hmm. the predominant taste in nature is bitter. Yeah. Bitter yeah. stimulates your digestion. Not sweet. Bitter. Not sweet. How come bitter has such your... a bad rant? Uh, I don't know. Everyone wants sweet. They I don't know. want bitter. Now imagine if I came from my clinic to your house and stopped in every grocery store and supermarket and bought the food. That's the a predominant good taste is sweet, sweet. and I salty. Yes. That's not nature. We have to get back to the bitters. They protect our liver. They flush our liver. Here we have chaparral, one of our great desert bitters. Here's some golden seal. Uh, one of your great mountain bitters. There's no shortage of bitters. Just go out in nature is and dandelion taste. Dandelion bitter? Oh, dandelion is a wonderful bitter. And again, Where does it rank another though, plant as a... that people want out of their right, yard. Right, right, right. But a great bitter that you but can use But does it rank every up day. with the ones that you consider the 10 most no. important? No. Dandelion is one of the ones that you can use every day. You can make dandelion Sad, leaf too. tea. You can so take Because the your... health food movement talks about it a lot, but I never sounded like one of the ones that no, no, you it's not. put up but at the top. Cut up your dandelion root, chop it up, dry it, and roast it in your oven. And you pour boiling water over that and make roasted dandelion coffee. It's better anything you can get at the coffee houses. I want to make that. That's right. Everybody <laughs> can have that every day. You can make it yourself. There's no shortage of dandelions. Just go yeah. out in your front yard. Um, so your bitters, but remember, milk thistle protects the liver, Hawthorne protects the heart. We need what's on this table. What's on it? Right? Ten herbs, Sam. This is, this is really involved here. Ten herbs and ten herbal ideas to have in your home. Okay. And there's three herbs that everybody can have. They're the three top digestive tract herbs that'll just build you a new life. I've had all my patients with burnout duodenums and bleeding stomachs Bless me mm. about these three herbs, peppermint, fennel, and ginger. And they grow all over the world. Mm. Anybody can grow peppermint. This is a peppermint from my house. And you know where I grew it? Underneath my garden hose that has a leaky faucet, okay? Mm -hmm. And I don't it's fix easy, the leak. Right? You're I don't it's call easy. the I don't call the plumber cuz peppermint loves water. So find an area around your house that's wet or that doesn't drain well. 
plant the peppermint, and then you'll curse me that you ever planted it because it'll take over. It's so much better than oh. going to the health food store oh. and getting peppermint tea. There's this no, is great. There's no you know replacement. People, you, know, you know what people forget? They usually put this as a garnish yeah. on your cheese that's, cake, that's right? right. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's a And, and you don't need it. Add it to your salads. You can make tea out of it. You you crumple this up. You can even use it fresh. Pour it's boiling nice. water over it. It's wow. Really the essential oils in this plant stimulate your digestion. Like it'll sleep. remove it. Yeah, we get home. Cramps, yeah. colic, nausea, indigestion, anything that's foul or stuck here, it moves it through. This herb, remember, grow it near water. But another herb, here's California. You've seen it all over any oh, coast. Okay. That's one area. I've seen but never known oh, what it was. It's, it's all over the East Coast, the West Coast, coastal areas of the world. I've seen it in the south of France, in Spain, North Africa, you name it. The coast has fennel. It's sometimes called sweet fennel. If you taste it, this fennel. Well, it's a little bit like licorice. It's isn't like it? licorice, yes. Yeah. Some people think it's anise, which is a very nearby neighbor to this, and will work the same they way. Make pickles with? I've seen, you know, sure. older and dill. people. Dill. 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 And dill is the same family, another oh, cousin to this herb. And these That's what are I was the flowers about. as they are now, but then as it dries, the flowers turn into seeds, and these are fennel seeds right here. But just take a little bit of that flower. Isn't this the one that Dr. Christopher, is it this one used for gas? Oh, for gas and cramps and colic. I went to see a patient of mine at his office, ran a modeling agency, and he was having horrible gas and cramps. Nice. And he said, do you have anything, yeah, like better than anything that you can use for this? And you know what I did? I saw fennel growing in his sidewalk. Oh, I dug it out, I gave it to him, and his gas and cramps were gone in an hour. And he couldn't believe that it was something that grows up out of the sidewalk. I've seen this growing through the parking lot at Dodger Stadium. This is a weed. These are weeds, Sam, and they can heal you of the worst digestive problems. Is this problems. what they make licorice out of? Because this tastes just no, like No, but a licorice. lot of people think different. this is licorice. A it lot of people think like it's it. licorice, yeah. But it's called fennel, wonderful plant, all mm. the digestive plants. Okay, we have oh, yes. fennel. We have peppermint, so and we you have could ginger have, root. Instead of anise, I don't know what they do when people are all cramped up and doubled uh -huh. over, but uh -huh. this can do it. You, you, you use a little bit of lobelia for the spasm. Oh, you, to get you it going. You add your digestive herbs. You name the disease, and I can heal it with what's on these tables. In the comfort of your home. Oh, absolutely. Right. And there's one more herb, number 10 here, that I'd like to mention all by itself because it's a very magical special herb, and this is slippery elm. Mm -hmm. It's the bark, it's the powdered bark of the slippery elm tree, the powdered inner bark. And this herb is magical in a number of ways, but the most important one is it's mucilaginous. If you take a little pinch of that and put it in your mouth, it's not easy to do. Oh, I've made this into a gruel when yes. I couldn't yes. eat when I was real yeah. sick. Yes, yes, yes. She's and, made it for oh, me. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's, it's, it's mucil when you can't digest, uh, nothing can go down, you can sip a teaspoon of that. Oh, it absorbs. You know, <laughs> I came back from India with the word, yeah, don't breathe it in. <laughs> <laughs> But you see how it turns mm. mucky and muddy. But it tastes nice. It has kind of a woody but nutty flavor to it. Mm -hmm. It tastes nice. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah we've got to be careful not to inhale the herbs. Mm. Um, and it tastes really nice. What are you saying about India? Oh, well, I went to India, and I had the worst case of dysentery I've ever seen. And I used all the power herbs to destroy the bacteria, and I still had it. I used the herbs to boost my <coughs> immunity. And I still had it. That's okay. This is, this is herbs. This is dangerous stuff now. <laughs> and, and I came home and nothing worked. And all of a sudden, I felt like making myself a nice hot cup of slippery elm tea. And lo and behold, within an hour, my dysentery stopped. I didn't stopped. know I could do that. Um, this is a powerful herb for binding, for diarrhea. The best part about slippery elm mm -hmm. is if you take one-third slippery elm bark right. powder mm -hmm. and mix it with two-thirds any other herbs on this table or any herbal combination, okay. it gives you the greatest poultice that you've ever had. And a poultice means that you're using herbs for external applications on the body. So you're taking these herbs and actually putting them on it's, the body. It's like glue. Oh, it's like glue. Mm. Slippery elm is like herbal glue. And you use that and it turns into a mud that'll stick to you. I've gone out into the woods and into the water and it doesn't mm. come off until you really work on it. We use this for poultices on the body. So slippery elm mixed with these herbs, the plantain, whatever, uh, it'll make it stick to your body. I've even mixed it with aloe on hard areas to keep it on. Mm. You can mix oh, it with a, a 
cayenne idea. peppers to stimulate So now you're not just talking about the separate herbs. It's how you use them together. Oh, use these them together. These are so multi-purpose. Every one is multi-purpose. Oh, and these, uh, believe me, I, this is your 10 herbs you don't want to live without. You I remember your, your, home. your teacher, uh, Dr. Christopher, yeah. um, used to use that as a gruel on patients with like open sores, oh, wounds absolutely. that wouldn't heal. And that just, herb alone. Just on its own. It's a yeah, magical healer. Healed up. Parts of the body That's that would right. never grow together. But you mix it with the you others. Mean like gangrene or something? Oh, that? all sorts of all sorts of skins problems. rotting. But What's gangrene, this? you want to add the clothes. circulation, so you use cayenne with it. Why use it alone when you can mix all mm. these other herbs with it? So mm. it's a it on its own, it's a powerful healer. But mixed with any it's of even these, better. if you want to draw poisons yeah. out of an area, mix it with some plantain and with some charcoal. Okay. You want to stimulate oh, this blood really flow to the area, mix it with some chili and mix it with some uh, chili cayenne peppers and some ginger. You want to make an area relax, make a lobelia poultice and mix it with lobelia. Amazing. You want to burn off a cancer tumor, mix it with the garlic and burn that tumor right off the body. The aloe Amazing. vera doesn't stick enough, mix it with slippery elm. You can use <laughs> poultices over the kidneys. You can use a poultice of hawthorn and with chili peppers over your heart. And have you done that? On the oh heart? yeah, and for okay. your digestion, nothing is better than peppermint, fennel and ginger with slippery elm. It soothes, it reduces the inflammation. This herb can go with this all This takes us to a whole nother level. Oh, you know what it tells really. me? You don't need a doctor. That's right. You don't need a hospital. That's right. This is all you need right. for the knowledge how to use That's right. Them. Careful how I just say that. <laughs> <laughs> These are the ten herbs. This is the big mystery of herbology, how to make herbal preparations. It's scary, right? Oh, yeah. But now people want to know, how can I turn this into a, a useful herbal product that I can use for myself in the house? This is tincture. Okay. I found this terrifies people. Well, okay. see, a tincture is the most popular way to use herbs now and was in history because it's a concentrated alcoholic and water preserved extract of herbs. Okay. Water extracts some of the power out of herbs. Alcohol extracts other chemicals out of herbs. And you have a liquid extract that you can use in an emergency. It's concentrated. It's potent. It has a shelf life of 30, 40, 50 years. That, I've, that I've, really helps. I've tasted tinctures that were 80 and 90 years old, and they curled my toes. They were so strong. But the with herbalist. No, with no preservatives, right? With no preservatives. No preservatives. Alcohol helps it get yeah. into your bloodstream faster. Uh, it preserves it for a very long period of time. But no one. Anywhere I went to any herbal school could tell me how to do this. Wait, right, you're, you're kidding. Oh, no. This is a very closely guarded herbal secret. What we're doing this is today, what, people oh, didn't want to tell oh, you? Oh, this is the big mystery. The manufacturers certainly don't want you to know how to do this. Otherwise, by accident, you'd make something 10 times better than they're making with all the high-tech advertising and the high-tech equipment. Are you sure we don't need a million-dollar uh, lab? <laughs> test tubes. There's no test tubes here. That's right. And, and the herbalists, well, they don't necessarily want you to know this. The truth is, they don't know it either. Most of these yeah. herbalists, again, are just writing their books about a yeah. chemical in an herb and how it hopefully you might You've got help buddies that are herbalists, and they don't... Oh, they cut their finger off with this knife. They wouldn't know how yeah. to make these preparations. <laughs> the first thing we're going to have to right. do is find somebody that has no degree in agriculture, sure. no degree in botany, uh -huh. doesn't know Latin names, has no understanding of biology, biochemistry, and has taken no chemistry classes. Do we know uh, anybody God, like that? I think we got somebody. <laughs> oh, I Sam. Did, I, did, I, did, <laughs> All right. I fit the description. Perfect. <laughs> OK. So I just want to show you how simple it is that anybody can make an extract at home that will be powerful and they can use. And I think a good one to start with is peppermint. Here's some oh, fresh mint. Yes, that was wonderful. Yeah, I got this uh, right outside, like I said, under my dripping hose as we're all But up. I've seen it in grocery stores. Yeah, yeah. And we want to prepare this mm -hmm. uh, to go in the blender to make our first... Oh, no, let me do it, let me do it. Oh, to make our first extract. Yeah, I couldn't get it off. And so we want to prepare this peppermint. All in here? Um, yeah, and the way we prepare it, dump it in. <laughs> Just dump that okay. down in the blender. That's our big preparation right there. Now, now the menstruum for tinctures 
What is, is menstruum mean? Menstruum means the liquid that you're going to extract the healing properties of those okay. herbs out and into. Okay. And you can use many types of things. Water works, and that's what a tea is, but the water will go bad in a couple days. Yeah. Water and grain alcohol is the perfect substance. The grain alcohol not only preserves, but it helps extract some of the harder chemicals that water alone won't get out. And the perfect right. secret solution of water and grain alcohol, you got it, cheap vodka. Right here, cheap vodka. This is 40% alcohol or 80 proof vodka. 80 proof or 40% alcohol means that this is 60% pure water and 40% grain alcohol. Richard, I'm smiling because whenever I go to the uh, ABC store in my state to make tinctures yeah. and I walk out with like four or six of these, yeah. I, I feel like apologizing on the way out. <laughs> I, I really don't drink this stuff. I'm okay. <laughs> I used to go to this market right down the street here, right at Trancas and buy myself a bottle of fresh orange juice and a bottle of vodka every morning. <laughs> and I walked out one day and I heard him go, that guy is such a drunk. <laughs> and, uh, but this is the greatest tincture base. All you're going to do oh, is open that up and pour it in. And do now, I need measuring cups? Uh, I don't think so. You don't oh, have a degree, cool. so I let's not right, do anything right. technical. Ignorance. Uh, here we go. Uh, now, if you squeeze that bottle a little bit, it comes out. And that's all we're doing is we're putting this vodka over this peppermint, that looks like plenty to me. This is the high-tech world of herbal preparations That's right it? here. Right here. You turn that blender around and get it blended really nice. Are you ready? Can you handle it? Well, now people want to say, do I do shred, beat, <laughs> blend, liquid? I knew we'd run into a stumper here. <laughs> There's too many buttons. That's okay. right. Okay. All by the blender itself, it figured out how to chop up that peppermint. It's liquefying it now into our alcohol, into our water, our green alcohol and water. Try a little higher speed. I was going to put it on, yeah. Let's even take it up more RPMs. Let's get daring. That's the <laughs> speed limit. That's as high as it goes. Ooh. Hey, hyperdrive. Okay, shut it off. Okay, here's the test right here. Mm. Here we have peppermint tincture. Look at our one minute tincture has a better green color sure than those does. products it that sure we does. bought. I can smell right from here. Look at the color of this, Sam. It's Look at gorgeous. the color, Sandy. This is our one-minute tincture, okay? I this think even smelling oh, it is oh. healthy for you, don't oh, you? Oh, absolutely. The aroma, it's the aromatic yeah. oils. Yeah. Now, this tincture is supposed to be made on the new moon. It's supposed to be, wait. What's the, what's the new moon? Well, I always get confused. The new moon is when there's no moon, when the moon is dark, when you can't see a moon out. Okay. That's the new moon. Is that just superstition? Well, you know, a lot of people think so, but all not only the herbalists of old went by that, but all the farmers still go by that with planting, with harvesting. It affects the tides. This isn't superstition. Police forces even put more officers on the street during a full moon. That's where yeah. the power is. So we start on the new moon where there's no moon, and okay. then we harvest on the full moon. We squeeze this tincture out and let it set for that 14 days, shaking okay. it every day. And of course, we can just squeeze it out through a high-tech cloth, but a good cotton undershirt works just fine. Just wash it and make sure mm -hmm. that it has no chemicals in it, but a good cotton, and you would put that over a bowl and squeeze this out after 14 days. Okay. But we're just making our one-minute tincture. It couldn't possibly be as good as the one, the power tinctures we bought. Oh, I wanted some too. There you go. Oh, it's so good. I can smell the I mean, essential it oils, is. the it's menthol. Really nice. it's, it's got a, a richness of flavor. I, I, it's Wait not a minute. Just you didn't taste it. that richness in the products from the health food well, store? Well, it never occurred to me because there wasn't anything but that burnt nothing. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is like, it's not one it's flavor. Nice. It's a. This is what I call full spectrum. That's how you would say There's it. more than just menthol or an essential oil and peppermint. It's 
full. Oh, you have the whole plant in here. Mm. This is a peppermint tincture, and that's how easy it is to make one. And look, look at Now, it's only been in there two minutes, and look at that it's color. How did the biochelated, especially standardized, high-tech stuff not be green? You peppermint make all that stuff green. sound stupid. Yeah, it is. It's pretty stupid stuff. I'm just going to pour that out. That's our high-tech tincture. Going to run a little water in here. Now we're going to make a cayenne tincture. Uncle Harry's in the living room. He's got pains in his chest. He isn't feeling good. You don't have time to go to the health food store. And even if you do, you'll end up with that cayenne tincture that we bought that had no heat to it at all mm -hmm. and that was clear. It's uh, sweet. It's sweet. Oh, it was just sweet. I mean, nothing in it. Mm -hmm. So now what we want to do is prepare our fresh peppers that we have. Uh, we have our cutting board here. We mm -hmm. have our knife. We can wash these, clean these. But you know what? Uncle Harry's not going to last that long. That man's in the living room. <laughs> he's down on the couch, and he's saying, I think this is it. I think this is it. And so we got to go. I so hurry. dump them in. Oh, what about the stems? Uncle Harry's more important. That's right. Uncle Harry's got pains in his chest right now. The heck with the stems. Save Uncle Harry. Now, the okay. second big technical aspect here. This again? Up, oh, you got it. And she so said nice. she had no I degrees. Have, I'm a fast learner. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put in our water and hey, our grain spirits. He's going quick. Oh, oh, you're right, God. God oh, Uncle yeah, Harry. that's that's the technique for when Uncle Harry's going. Okay. 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 Stick that pepper in. Put that top on. Look at how clear that liquid is right now. A few Are you peppermint ready? leaves in there. We think we got a formula going. We we gotta go. Hyper speed. Whoa. Okay. Around and round it goes. Not even a minute. I oh, bet, I bet you didn't this stop is the it mystery. One is up. This is the big herbal mystery oh right my God. here. Uncle Harry, I just heard him scream again. Here, open it up. More. Uncle Harry, scream and open it up. Throw a few more in. Ah, this now is we're really. Better than 911. That's right. That's right. <laughs> 911 wouldn't stand a chance. You know, they say that in major cities today, a third of the calls to 911, you get a busy signal. So we don't. Have, we just got a busy signal now with 911. That's it. Excuse That's enough. Me. Okay. That's enough time. Let's take a dropper full of that here. Give me a. We wire. don't have time to filter it. Okay. I'm for gonna... now, I'm Harry. <laughs> Hurry. Harry. Hurry. We didn't have time to I'm press going. it. We didn't have time to filter it. We didn't have time to do anything. Oh, God, I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> now I think the, it's going to be all right. Now, does that taste like that stuff we tried? You have any, you have any power, any heat to that? Look at the color of that already. I'm walking on air. I'm not on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to try some? Why not? Uh, here, we'll do dropper fulls. Dropper. Well, just do it lady -like And I'm just going to take fulls. some of this clear liquid off the top here. Ooh, there's a... See if you if you if you taste anything there. Oh. <laughs> yes, I do. I sure do. Woo! I think I got the hottest ones floating yeah. on top. <laughs> no, no. I'm gonna, I'm gonna live. I'm not She's that begging bad. for stop. <laughs> Nobody's gonna have a heart attack anymore. No one's fainting. No one's passing out. You know what's important? I feel too? good. Let's go out to eat. <laughs> you feel, you know, after the initial ah. Oh, yeah. You feel. I you know. really feel, don't you, honey? It's yeah, it, it spreads. And it goes spreads. from the mouth. No, it's a sense of well-being. Yeah. Look at the color yeah. there. Yeah. The richness, the power of this. It's strong. The best Richard. cayenne tincture you can buy made from fresh peppers from the See, grocery store. Now my whole head is warm. That's the effect. Yeah. My, my mouth. Oh, look at my your head. Face. Yeah. And oh, I feel yeah. it, I feel it in my chest. Oh, the perspiration all over your body. That's called blood. Oh. Blood That's and circulation. Great. That's just great. Blood and circulation. But now I'd like to share with you, you know, every great herbalist, and that's what I consider myself, has what they call a, a all-purpose tonic okay. or, or a plague formula. And most of them were very complicated. Most of them you had to simmer 12 herbs for four hours each separately and then reduce them down to a quarter of their original That's what volume. I thought herbalism was, Richard. Oh, and then juice this and juice that and add this in and add that in. I had master herbalist students around the world that couldn't even copy the plague formulas 
of the famous herbalists. And the problem is, is when someone comes down with a 104 degree fever, you don't have four weeks to put something together. So what, I, wh I'm a, what I'm a master at is making quick, easy preparations that anybody can put together right children, now. Children can do this. From stuff you get in the grocery children store. Children can do Absolutely. it. Absolutely. You can get this at the farmer's yeah. market. So I developed what I call a super tonic made from all five fresh ingredients that anybody can make. The first ingredient, cayenne pepper. What's the exact proportion? Uh, <laughs> one handful each. <laughs> uh, I, make my, I make my formulas in parts, and so that means a thimble full, a cup full, a bucket full, a wheelbarrow full, a that easy? Full. It's that easy. This is not high-tech science here. This is not nuclear physics. Okay. Uh, we're trying to save people's lives. And the cruder we do it, it'll still be better than anything you can we buy. We can't make, too, oh. make it too strong. Can I start? Uh, Do I start? Well, I've never put three herbs together and seen any type of flash or explosion come out of the blender here. <laughs> uh, you know, fear is what everybody uses to hold themselves back from doing what we're doing right here, mm -hmm. and yeah. it's so easy. So the first thing, it, uh, one of the first of the five ingredients in the super tonic, the cure-all tonic, is cayenne. Remember, cayenne is going to drive the blood throughout the body, break up that blockage, and heal you. We've already prepared some chopped up peppers right there. That's all you do is chop them up. We could have put them in We could have put them in whole. It doesn't matter. The second ingredient is ginger root. Remember, we talked about that as going to the extremities and coming back. So now we have the two greatest herbs to boost your mm. circulation that you could have. Now we know we're going to get the blood all around the body. Okay. The and you third, know these are all good for you. Oh, absolutely. No fear. This is all food. Oh, you couldn't buy an herbal tonic this powerful with all the oh. money in the world. Food is medicine. Absolutely. Used the way he does it. Yeah. Oh. It's medicine. Yeah, it's medicine. Garlic. Don't destroys you have, any germs. Don't you have two cloves, too many? <laughs> <laughs> no. I only count by bulbs, okay? okay? I don't count by cloves. A garlic destroys any bacteria, any virus, any fungus, any antigen, any pathogen, anything Whoa. that will hurt you, Gosh. and it strengthens your body. That's quite a brew you got. Uh, that's quite a brew, and it's not finished. We put in some onions, which is garlic's next of kin, mm. and the hotter the onions, the better. Just passing that by me right now made my eyes tear. Hot white onions, the hottest onions you can get, the same family as garlic. Uh, just as a backup, and onions also work up into the head more and start opening in the sinuses. And They're the, more aromatic. Oh, or you, you want to know the cure? Conjunctivitis. I've had so many patients with what conjunctivitis. conjunctivitis. Eyes? The tear ducts are blocked, and therefore the natural enzymes in the tears that are antibacterial yeah. can't flush out the eye, and you get eye infections. Conjunctivitis. Oh, okay. I have the absolute cure for conjunctivitis. That's it right there. <laughs> Onions. The cure. A man, man. <laughs> all you have to do is chop onions and make lunch, and all of a sudden, no more conjunctivitis. You're crying, your tear ducts are open. I've had people spend thousands of dollars at the doctors and go through living hell with eye infections, and this will end it in an afternoon, and all they have to do, I used to have my patients go in the kitchen and make me lunch. <laughs> okay, the fifth ingredient here, horseradish root. Well, horseradish goes right to the head, oh, I know right that. up to the head. And here's our horseradish root, wonderful horseradish root. You can grate it, you can chop it. The bottom line, get it in the blender. That's a little harder to find, isn't it, for people? Uh, or, or, do it they just not, or do they store? just yeah. ignore it? And you know, there's such great stores. It's not like there's a big section of yeah. like 200 of them, but they'll think, have And all over it. the country now, we're having fresh fields. Now this one, we're not going to use vodka. Oh. We're going to use apple cider vinegar. So shake that up, because okay. that's the good stuff uh, with, with, with the particles in the bottom. And then just fill that up about two-thirds of the way. You know, Sam, and there's good stores opening up all over the country. Fresh Fields, you have one in your area, uh -huh. Whole Foods. And they're big grocery stores with lots of dry goods and produce. Oh, uh, easy you can to put get. more Everything. in there. Let's, more? let's top it right off, just okay. so it just covers the, the okay. just because it covers the herbs. And all of those will get horseradish and good chili peppers and ginger and onions and it's garlic. No problem today. Oh, no problem. They'll even get organic. Okay, here we are. I don't know. <laughs> here we are. Turn okay, it on. Go. She's going right to high. Okay, here's the miracle brew. Something's going to happen. Shut it off. Shut up. Okay. 
And I'm just going to bring that right over here. You can inhale this. Yeah. Uh, remember, just the odor Odors, of garlic healthy. has destroyed bacteria, virus, yeah. and fungus. Just the odor is powerful. But let's take ourselves a little taste. I have a spoon right here. Now, we didn't have time to filter it out. We didn't have time to squeeze it. Uh, Sam, would you like to take a taste of this? My patient swore this was the absolute cure. That was a pretty big taste. You just <laughs> took a cure for the common cold. It's okay. <laughs> no, I'm telling you, it's, it's like there's no problem. Oh, yeah, I know. Isn't it great? Or maybe after that other blast. <laughs> the <co> <laughs> Whoa! Wow. Let's get the spoon away from this guy. <laughs> Sandy, you interested? I'm interested. And don't worry about sharing the spoon. No self-respecting germ would live down yeah, in here, believe right. me. That's Garlic right. kills it all. Cayenne. It's not a problem. And ginger to blast the circulation. Uh, I think the, the horseradish goes up to the head. And what the person would do is would strain this out and take the liquid out of it. The vinegar seems to soften that cayenne. Yeah. The vinegar extracts from these herbs the same way the alcohol will, okay. but in a milder way. And the power okay. of all these herbs in there works just fine. But the vinegar, many people have said to me, well, how long will the supertonic last? Will the vinegar go bad? Vinegar's already bad. That's what vinegar is. It's gone it is off. Fermented. It's already bad. This doesn't go off? Doesn't go off. You can keep it for But you got to strain it, right? You can strain it. You know what? Many of my patients didn't. They left it like applesauce, and they like spooning it in just like you guys did. And this did. doesn't ferment in the cupboard? No, not at all. Just gets better with age. What did you Amazing. notice from a spoon of that? It's, it's actually very good. Yeah. You, you know, know, you talk about recipes. This, this is cooking. You know, one of my patients who's a food producer. People are going crazy yeah. over today. Yeah. It's like a really tasty hot sauce. One of my patients Probably who's healthier. a food producer says that we should bottle this and sell yes. it as the world's yes. most it's best good. salad dressing. It is. I was expecting something medicinal. When you have too. a cold or a flu like or a well, sickness yeah, yeah. or a disease yeah. or AIDS or cancer or anything, Make yourself your super tonic, have it always in your cupboard, in your refrigerator, and use it every day. It'll kill every germ in your body, it'll build up your strength, and it'll boost your circulation. How much, if you were really sick, what would you, how much would you take? I would use 10, 15 spoons of it a day. Okay, the average dose is a half ounce of the liquid gargled, get it all over your tonsils, your throat, and then swallow it. That would be a good dose. If you overdose, the big problem with herbs, You'll throw up. Oh, that's, no. the, that's the only downside. You know, so this here is the mystery and magic and high technology and, and secrets that were held for generations. Do we need a license? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Can we do this in our home? <laughs>
That's all it is. That's it? More herbs in the jug. There's got to be more. See, when I make a product in my clinic, I knew that it was to heal. I, I wasn't seeing products. I was seeing sick and dying people with cancer and AIDS and arthritis and neuromuscular diseases. That's why I make them like that. You don't make weak stuff. Put all the herbs that you can fit in the jar up to the top and then top it off with liquid. Hey, when you got out of herbal school, you must have started like this. Right. Oh, absolutely. They taught you that. Yeah, and you know what happened? No. Nothing. <laughs> no one got well. No one got well. That's right. You, no mean, one you, got well. you did it. And no, it didn't work for me. It didn't work for my patients, okay. and that's why the products available don't work. So that's why you ended up. Yeah, and everybody says, well, you're wasting herb. Like I said, herbs are weeds. There's no shortage of them. Let's support American farmers to be good new organic growers. And you know what this costs when you make a little bottle of it over this? About 50 cents more. And that 50 cents is the difference between life or death to a loved That's one. Amazing. Don't that really short is. yourself on herbs. That's great, Richard. It really is. I think we, I think we did it. Yeah. We're, we're standing by How did these jars come out? Look good, look dark, look full. Yeah, Can you yeah. see the herb material full in there? The, 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 be, the beginning of your, the ver, I can say this word. The vinegar. Uh, 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 uh,